This video is made possible by Skillshare. Start learning for free for a full two months by clicking on the link in the description below. Laser weapons, or sometimes also known as a death ray, have been a popular weapon in sci-fi thrillers for now more than a century. They can be found in famous novels like War of the Worlds, where heat rays lay complete waste to suburban towns or even in more modern films like Star Wars or Star Trek. When the first laser was invented in the year 1960, the idea of using it as some sort of super weapon, laying waste to everything in its path, seemed like a complete act of science fiction. But all of that could be changing very soon. New prototypes mounted on US Navy ships have proven this technology is real and have now been used to destroy small watercraft, shoot down test missiles, and even aerial drones. So all this leads to asking what is the state of current laser weapon technology and what does it hold for the future of warfare? Aside from just looking incredibly cool, one obvious point is that a laser is essentially just light, and as such it travels at literal light speed. In a in previous video on this channel, I already talked about how impressive new hypersonic missile technology could be and that hypersonic missiles can travel at up to Mach 7 or 8,346 kilometers per hour. But light travels way faster, think 300 million meters per second fast, aka Mach 872,705. All this to basically say that lasers are incredibly fast and basically give no warning warning of attack, which would be a pretty incredible capability. Beyond this though, and at the moment, firing a weapon or shooting an object out of the sky generally means firing something very, very expensive at it. Now, if the object in question is an expensive plane or a sophisticated missile, then perhaps this is justified. But what if you could just shoot it with a laser beam and eliminate it that way? Although yes, it does take energy to power the device, it is still way cheaper than firing, say, a 50,000 dollar missile at the target, and as an added benefit, it would never run out of ammunition. Benefits like this could dramatically not only change the way in which wars are waged, but also the economics behind them. The idea of a laser-like weapon has been around for a long time. As mentioned at the start of this video, the best known early example of this is an H.G. Wells 1897 science fiction novel, The War of the Worlds, in which an army of technologically superior Martians invades Earth using giant fighting machines equipped with heat rays capable of setting ablaze anything in their sight. The history behind a real-life laser, which really is just an acronym for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation, can be traced back to the early 20th century when Albert Einstein proposed that light is made up of quantum particles called photons, and that these photons could be emitted from various materials by pumping energy into them in a very precise way. In 1960, Theodore Mainman at the Hughes Research Lab in Malibu, California did exactly what Einstein described and invented the first functioning laser. While the first laser may look strange, it is a surprisingly simple device consisting of a synthetic ruby medium sitting inside of a coiled up flat lamp tube. To the uninformed, its function and how it works may seem complicated, but the principle behind it and all modern laser synths is actually quite simple. At the end of the day, a laser is just a beam of light and really nothing more. What makes it unique is that the light emanating from the laser is in a uniform pattern and is moving in the same direction. As opposed to normal everyday light, which is made up of all sorts of varying wavelengths moving in all sorts of directions, a laser is made up of light in a single wavelength, thus giving it the typical monochromatic look that it has. This allows the laser to place the light radiating out of the device in a very precise spot over an extremely long distance, and with enough energy that it can destroy a target as well. So how exactly is all of this done? Well, exactly as Einstein said, a laser is produced by pumping energy into what is known as a lasing medium. This is a liquid, solid, or gas made up of atoms that will become excited when energized and then begin to emanate light. In the first laser developed in 1960, the medium was a rod of synthetic ruby wrapped in the coil of a xenon lamp. At either end of this medium are mirrors where light will bounce back and forth until passing through one of the ends once energized enough as a single coherent laser beam. Well before this event occurred in 1960, and when lasers were still just a theoretical idea, laser weapons were an interesting science fiction concept that would frequently pop up in newspapers and popular science magazines 
scenes with claims that someone had invented a so-called death ray. Further, it also piqued military interest across the world as they had many incentives to prove this technology had practical use on the battlefield. As an example, beginning in 1934, Britain's air ministry was desperate to find a way in which to protect their skies from incoming enemy air attacks. One idea to protect Britain was to develop a death ray capable of zapping airplanes right out of the sky. The ministry even offered £1,000 to anyone who could develop a ray gun to kill a sheep at a distance of 180 meters to prove the technology possible. Fortunately for the sheep, and well, I guess unfortunately for Britain, they never did develop meaningful laser technology prior to World War II and had to go on without it. Unfortunately, up until recently, the new laser weapons that were expected any day failed to appear. But it wasn't for a lack of trying. Since the 1960s, the United States as well as many other countries poured huge amounts of money into this technology. The United States, for instance, launched a large effort to develop laser weapons during the Cold War with an effort known as the Strategic Defense Initiative, or SDI. Sometimes referred to as Star Wars, SDI was a program aimed at eliminating the nuclear standoff between the United States and the Soviet Union by deploying an advanced space-based anti-missile laser system capable of destroying Soviet ICBMs. If the program sounds ambitious, well, then you're right. It was ultimately scrapped after the program never got off the ground and ended up wasting over $30 billion over a period of 10 years. Today, however, the laser weapon scene is much different. Not only are the systems much more advanced, but they are actually beginning to be quite practical. Much of this is due to the fact that now, some six decades after the laser was invented, we are actually starting to understand how to design a proper laser weapon. Apart from just developing a strong laser beam, it is important to know the intended target so that the correct laser parameters can be set. Whether aiming at an ICBM, a drone, a mortar shell, or even an aircraft, the particular wavelength used can greatly increase the absorption of the beam and thus increase the effectiveness. This combined with advances in pulsed solid state laser technology have increased the efficiency of lasers more than ever, yielding up to one third of all the electricity used into actual laser light as opposed to just a few percent as with earlier generations. The real breakthrough in this technology came relatively recently in 2014 when the US Navy began testing a 30 kilowatt laser, the equivalent of the average output of your home heater. When this was fitted to a small vessel, the USS Ponce, it proved able to fry components and motors of nearby drones and boats, proving it to be a formidable defensive weapon. In light of this earlier success, a 60 kilowatt system will soon be fitted on the USS Preble, a US Navy destroyer sometime later this year, and it is rumored that a 150 kilowatt version is in the works as well. The next challenge will be to develop laser technology further, potentially reaching 500 kilowatts within just a few years, thus increasing the destructive capability of the weapon. In the meantime, however, there are many legal considerations to take considering how these weapons are to be used. Under the protocols of the Geneva Convention, the use of lasers against humans is currently not allowed. Regardless, at this stage of laser technology, they likely couldn't kill a human anyway without holding the beam on them for a sustained period of time, but it could seriously burn. As a result, these weapons, at least for now, may restrict the use to just drones, missiles, and other vehicles. Vehicles. Lasers are still a ways away from becoming any type of standard issued battlefield weapon, but it is closer than ever before. As lasers grow in power and their optics improve to create longer, more adaptable beams, the rules of warfare are destined to change. While they may not replace other weapons, they will provide many offensive and defensive capabilities that will render many current military technologies completely obsolete. While the science fiction scenario revealed by Wells is obviously a a bit far-fetched, at least at the current moment in time, it may be much closer than we really think. But whatever the case, hopefully these great weapons of war never have to be used, and instead, more cool science fiction works like those depicted in War of the Worlds can be created instead. In fact, you too can create awesomely detailed laser beam-wielding robots just like those in the book 
by learning to become a better illustrator and designer using Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with literally thousands of classes focused on graphic design, animation, illustration, and so much more. With Skillshare, you can learn about how to create awesome illustrations and designs by checking out classes like Ira Mark's Illustration by Design, A Guide to Elevating Your Drawing Skills. This class has 17 full-length lessons that will walk you through step-by-step -step how to become a better illustrator and create stronger visuals with absolutely no experience required. Skillshare is great because the classes are short and concise so you can fit all of your learning into your busy schedule and best of all the annual subscription will cost you less than $10 per month. As a special offer right now the first 500 people who click on the link in the description will get two free months of Skillshare Premium for free where you can explore all of the classes that Skillshare has to offer. And as always thank you so much for watching.